This is Roger Wick, Curator of Medieval and Renaissance Manuscripts at the Morgan Library and Museum. This prayer book, a recent gift to the Morgan by Elaine Rosenberg, a longtime supporter of the library, was made for Claude de France around the time when she was crowned in 1517. It is a prayer book that was a companion volume to another book, which is in a European private collection, which is called A Book of Hours because it has those central texts for the Book of Hours. Together, they comprise the traditional prayers to be found in uh, almost any Book of Hours from this period, but for reasons we don't know, they were separated, and we own the half that's called the prayer book. One of the manuscript's quite unusual features is its size. It's very, very, very small. It's less than three inches tall and two and a half inches wide. There was a tradition for the French royals, especially the queens, to commission very, very small books. It wasn't that bigger was better, it was the opposite. The smaller your book, the more valuable and jewel-like it became. I wanted to talk about some of the more intriguing images that occur in the manuscript. Here, for instance, it's open to folios 4V and 5, and you see towards the right a square miniature that shows a man seated at a desk writing. That's uh, the evangelist Mark. We know it's Mark because on the lower left page there's actually a rubric written in gold that gives his name. But if we return to the miniature, we can also tell that it's Mark because his little symbol is there. That's the lion, the little sort of cat-like face peering out from the lower right of that square miniature. That's very traditional iconography to show the evangelist seated in writing. What's unusual in the book, and this is a, a leitmotif that goes throughout the book, is that the artist has investigated uh, more unusual stories or narratives or iconography to put into the borders of the manuscript. So, for instance, on the left, you see that figure in blue being dragged through the city streets. That happens to be Mark again, and uh, it shows his martyrdom because he was killed by having been pulled out of the church in uh, Alexandria, where he was saying mass, and dragged to death through the streets of the city. And actually, if you look closely, you can see the blood that is below him as the abrasion of the road is cut into his flesh. The people dragging him are two young men, very well-dressed in tight-fitting hose and feathered hats. And that's very typical for this period, this period being the Middle Ages and the Renaissance. Executioners are always amongst the most fashionably dressed, <laughs> ute dressed people uh, in the manuscript. There's an association with uh, being well-dressed and being morally corrupt. On the right-hand side, you see a miracle that occurred in conjunction with his martyrdom. After Mark died, after being dragged to death, a storm broke out, and you can see that on the top right, a kind of golden lightning or flashes of light coming from behind the purple clouds, and this storm has uh, frightened the people, and you see the man in the right margin in red and blue running away, and below him a man in a red top who's fallen down out of fear from the storm. And what happened is this storm did disperse the nasty crowd so that, uh, and actually if we turn the page on folio 5e, you can see that the body of Mark was then preserved enough to be given a decent and honorable burial.